Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In the previous lesson, we looked at the grid view and the data template that we'll be changing in lab number one, exercise number three, customize the UI. Uh, we're going to start in task number one. Uh, it asks us to make changes to the standard styles.xaml and to find the data template element whose name is standard 250 by 250 item template. This is the date template or should be data template <laughs> used to render the recipe items on the start page. All right. And then it gives us a number of things to do, like remove this, add that. Right. And so while the hands on labs ask you to simply blow away the old code and re and replace it with new code, I recommend before you do that to take just a few moments and really digest the changes that it's asking you to make. Uh, and so that you can verify the changes that they actually took and they, they accomplished what you set out to do. It also forces you to, own the changes yourself. Know why you're doing what you're doing. What's it going to accomplish? Don't just be in a rush to fly through these exercises. The best insights come when you're not rushed and you can really think, why am I doing this? Uh, what would I expect the result for this change to be? Okay. So here's how I would go through it. First of all, I would compare the current style and what the hands-on lab wants me to make it look like. So in this case, I can see that we're asked to change a few things about the standard 250 by 250 item template. We're gonna be changing the width and the height from these instructions. And we're also going to be uh, changing the, the first text blocks source attribute uh, to bind to the new shirt title property of our recipe data item and change its height as well to 48. And then we're gonna remove the second text block that currently displays the subtitle. So why are we removing it? Because the recipe app doesn't have a subtitle property. So we'll just be deleting it from the template wherever we see it. Uh, it's just an example of how we can make these templates our own whenever we're building our apps, all right? It makes sense so far. So let's go ahead and do what it asks us to do. The first thing is to actually find that template. And so we'll ultimately get to the standard 250 by 250 item template as it's referenced from the grid view in our grouped items page.xaml. And so I'm gonna to navigate to it the way I always do here. And so now we'll start following these instructions that it gives us. The first thing that it wants us to do is to remove the final text block element in the data template, the one that's bound to subtitle because the recipe data item doesn't have a subtitle property. Gotcha. All right, so that's easy enough to do. So here we go. I'm going to select it all and remove it. Okay. In the same data template, change the width and the height of the grid to 320 by 240 to preserve the original aspect ratio of the recipe images. Okay. So 320 by 240. Okay. And let's continue on. Also change the height of the remaining text block from 60 to 48 to decrease the height of the partially transparent overlay at the bottom of each image. All right, so let's just do that part. So we're going from 60 to 48. And then we wanna change the property bound to the text property of the text block from title to short title, okay? So here we are in title, Let's change it to short title. And so when you're done, your code will look like this. All right. And then press F5 to confirm. And we'll notice the biggest change will be the, the height of the, uh, of the static, I'm sorry, of the stack panel and then the orientation of each of the images. All right. So let's go ahead and finish that for task number one. Okay, so it looks like the, uh, both of these worked. That's great. And another thing you can do with this, you may already have realized this, is to make it larger. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, it looks real good. You can tell uh, it actually makes the images look a lot better, obviously. So uh, let's continue on then. Let's go ahead and, well, we'll just leave it open. and But we'll stop the execution of the debugger. 
Okay, so in task two, we're gonna be working on the group detail page. So let's go ahead and open that up. And we're gonna make the following changes. We're going to remove the grid view dot header. Let's see here. So the grid view dot header, first text block inside of it. I guess it refers to this one here that's currently binding to subtitle. And then we're gonna change the image elements width and top margin. So here's the image element. We're gonna change its overall width, which I guess is not being set right now, and its top margin, which would be this second value here. And then we're going to be making sweeping changes to the standard 500 by 130 template here in the, uh, the grid view, okay? So let's go ahead and follow the instructions as they're laid out for us in task number two. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove the first text block. in the uh, grid view dot header. So let's just go ahead and select it and hit delete. Then we're going to change, uh, replace the height equal 400 with width equals 480, all right? So we're replacing height equals 400 with width equals 480, okay? And then we're gonna change the top margin from zero to 10. So that should be that right there. Okay. And now our code should look something like that. And I can't compare it easily, but uh, I think that looks about right. Now go back to the standard styles.xaml in, in the data template and find the 500 by 30, 130 item template. All right, so. Let's just use the normal way we navigate these sorts of things. All right, so here is our data template, standard 500 by 130 item template. And we wanna change the width of the grid from 480 to 360, okay? Next, we want to remove the width equals 110 attribute from the border. We can do that, so we're gonna remove the width from the border. Done. And then we want to remove the two text block elements whose text properties are bound to subtitle and description, okay? Subtitle and description, there we go. Remove those gone. And then underneath the text block, add the following statements to include a preparation time below the recipe title. Okay. So underneath that text block, add the following statement. So I'm just going to copy the code. And I guess what it wants me to do is place it right here. Also, I guess I missed a step. Change the property bound to tech, uh, to the text property from title to short title. Okay, that makes more sense. So from title to short title. There we go. All right, and when you're done, this is what it should look like. Okay, so now start the app and tap any group header and it should look a little bit more like that. Okay, let's see. So we're gonna just tap the Chinese header and okay, it looks a little more like that. All right, so now we're on to task number three. And we want to run the app and tap the fried dumpling. Clearly we have some work to do, we've already seen that. So right click the common folder and add new item and we're gonna add a new class to the project and we're gonna name it list converter. All right, actually I tell you what, 
We're going to stop right here. We've made good progress at customizing the default grid app templates and making it our own. And so we're going to finish this up with the final template in the next lesson. And we're going to perform this task number three at that point. So we'll see you there. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.